Now, when you're working on the technical, is it useful? You probably have a lot of players come up and say, I have the problem that so-and-so has, or I want to swing like Rory, or I mm -hmm. want to do this move that Colin does. Is, is, is that useful to compare swings between what people see on TV? Um, or is that often, uh, or are people sort of maybe playing at the wrong thing there? Yeah, I think they're playing at the wrong thing. From a coach's standpoint, I think it's important that we understand that there are styles, mm -hmm. there's permutations or, or pieces of movement. You just described a few of them. I want to do it like Victor Hovland or Colin Morikawa or Adam Scott or Jim Furyk. Um, I've never had that, by the way. Say, never had that, that, say, that, that request. I want more of this. Exactly. Um, not disparaging Jim Furyk. I love his motion. I love oh, to watch him. We'd all love to be like Jim Furyk. It's fantastic. Sure. Um, very robotic and very controlled. Uh, but I think that to covet what other people have without understanding, there is matchups and movements that work for you. So understanding your own DNA, your swing DNA, what's important to you is far more important than, um, yeah. Uh, Eddie Pepperell in a podcast that we did with him explained it. I'll paraphrase or I might mix the metaphor, but he explained it this way. As a young player, he used to describe um, his experience of receiving coaching like um, he's in a supermarket and he's the shopping cart and his coach was pushing the shopping cart and pulling things out and putting them in the shopping cart, meaning deciding for Eddie Pepperell what was important for Eddie Pepperell. And that may be a piece of Colin Morikawa, a piece of Victor Harvin, a piece of Adam Scott. And then over the course of his development as a young professional, he realized that it was the inverse of that. He was mm. pushing the shopping cart and he was the one that was going to decide the pieces that were important to him. And I think it's a, somewhere between those two that the player needs to understand that her piece is important. The coach helps that player decide the pieces that are important for them, for their unique um, movement capabilities as humans, mm -hmm. um, their goals and desires out of the game. Um, so yeah, it's, it's certainly um, not appropriate for someone to covet what they see on TV and try sure. and chase that. Now, the swings that we do see or have seen as mm -hmm. a swing coach, Tell me, two, tell me some swings that you admire, admire maybe from golf's past mm -hmm. and then some contemporary swings that you, that you don't coach. That I uh, mean players that I don't coach? That you don't coach. Um, Keith Mitchell for its aesthetic um, structure, position, and rhythm. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Young for its structure, yet its immense power from what is not taught, which is that moment in time where he's floating at the top of his mm. swing and pausing uh, and to achieve such a great rate of acceleration from that um, is impressive. Uh, John Rahm is a study on being a Ferrari off the blocks to be able to create such speed from such a short range of motion. Um, those are the, th the ones that stand out in my mind. But this is actually a difficult question, which is interesting. I have to answer this question or you ask me the question. It's a difficult one for me to answer because I also don't do the same thing as a coach. I study other swings mm -hmm. um, to understand how they work, but not to the extent that um, I, I'm overly curious about um, the aesthetic. Okay. And, and I don't know whether that makes too much sense because uh, understanding how they work, but yet not really looking at them with um, gushing desire and love sure. is the place I'm coming from. Uh, times past, um, Tom Hertzer was always a favorite swing of mine. Um, Nick Faldo, because of the metamorphosis he went through to go from relatively average to being professional to best in the world is a study. And it's certainly someone as a young guy, a uh, young player, I wanted to evolve into. Um, being an Australian, uh, Ian Baker Finch was always a favorite player of mine um, because of the fluidity. I think overall, as I look at these, and I could go on with names from past mm -hmm. or present, what attracts me to a golf swing is rhythm, um, balance, before the structural positions that a person might hit um, because the styles that players use are innumerable, um, but yet, the glue that sticks a swing together is balance and rhythm and timing. And 
Um, yes, amateur golfers can learn a lot by making sure that they have aspects of their movement that they improve, but they could also learn a lot and they could play better golf by embracing um, that which would affect their timing and that, would, that which would affect the rhythm they use in a swing.